face or not. So I'm going to start just with getting that surface wet and go in. It's my amazing visible painting at this point in time. So I'm going to go just with a nice, just the whole of the paper getting quite sort of wet so that we can get some paint moving on the surface because I want to create some really lovely kind of hopefully sort of explosions of paint and colour that we can then work with. And then I'm going to go for uh, my largest sort of um, inch, I suppose, or three quarter inch flat brush, one of my favourites. And I'm going to mix up, um, I'm going to go for the hot colours, so I'm going to mix up an orange and a red together. So I want something that's somewhere between um, orange and red. Um, so plenty of um, colour. Let's get something on the page, otherwise this is going to be... Um, so to begin with, I'm just thinking of kind of literally a kind of s sausage. Well, you know, a kind of blob and that's going to become kind of the fish's body. I'm not going to worry about it spreading. I want it to move. I want it to start doing something interesting. We will come back and there will be a lot more detail on that. And then I can come in again with more paint and spread. Um, the, I want to say wings. I don't mean wings. I mean fins. The fins of the fish. So they have so we're going to have some area up here being kind of a fan of fish fin coming out like that and then he's going to have a tail sort of down there and uh, bring my um, areas of paint just so you can see I'm just it's really really free it's not really thinking about a shape or anything so we don't really have to worry too much about where anything's going because we can bring um, a little bit of detail to that uh, later on and maybe just a little dorsal fin that sort of short fin kind of coming out there so that really is just a big page of blobs but we're going to say to ourselves we can sort of see that there's sort of a fish body kind of in here and um, um, oh so I just got a quick email from a student just to check on that I think she's going to be late so she's stuck at work so there we go so we've got sort of a fish body kind of in here and we've got all these lovely fins sort of happening up here. That's it. So um, I want to get some more colour into this now. So I'm going to sort of go in with some more reds and oranges. And I just want to get areas of colour I can play with later. So I think for the, for the fin on top, I'm going to um, slightly get it bit more colour in so imagine that's kind of the fish body kind of underneath there I just want it slightly darker towards that and just sort of if I'm getting that to be too hard looking then I will get some splats going and get some water in to kind of soften that off a bit and the fishy, the fishy's body is going to sort of come down along here and then it's going to go down into a tail so I think I'm going to get, I'm going to go to something a little bit pinker now, just to add a slight sort of difference into the surface that I've got. So for the tail, the body is going to come sort of along here and then bring um, some of that pinky colour more into that sort of along the bottom of the edge there and kind of spread that round. So it's just really, really free, lots of drips, lots of shapes. And you can see sort of how this is going to give us things to work with with our fish sort of shape and then um, just going to put a little bit using the using the sort of edge of my brush just going to put some stripe sort of detail into that here but also some really nice sort of almost like jellyfish shapes going on here which are, is quite appropriate for a sort of underwater right so um, I think again I want something a bit darker um, coming into the sort of the tail area so I'm going to go for I'm going to see if, what it's like to add a bit of blue in to sort of add a kind of shadow it should hopefully blend in with the reds that I've got going on and give me a kind of purplish sort of feel so put some blue through there why not again just sort of think of that as being where the tail is sort of going to come through um, and then I'm going to use a little bit of this blue. I'm just sort of dabbing it on to the 
underneath his body like that. So that sort of gives me a feeling of where the fish's belly might be. And again, I'm not going to worry if it spreads. If I get a nice sort of spread and dribble happening, I can flick that down and kind of work into it. That looks quite, it looks bluer onto me than it probably does. I think the camera's making it look grey than it actually is, but we'll, I don't want to put too much more of that. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of it and I'm going to get some into this bottom edge here. I think just so sort we of get a real hint of blue just coming along the edge of that sort of fin shape there. And then down here, there's a nice sort of fancy edge to follow. So I'm going to take some blue into that. I want to want to sort of bring that down there. This looks very black on the camera. It is actually quite definitely blue. If I turn a bit more light onto it, you can see how it is it is actually a lot bluer even than that looks, but it is um it isn't black, it is blue, I promise you. And just so that's not too um static looking, I can just gonna come in and add some water into that and soften that so it's not too solid looking so we get some really nice blending going in that body color does look a bit grayish so i'm going to go in with some purple and give that a bit more of a purple tone so it still looks like shadow but give it a slightly more um interesting color hopefully just to bring that line of purpley blue across there um, but that should give us quite a lot of depth for where the kind of fish body comes. Now I'm going to now come in, uh, see already this has faded up quite a lot because this is what watercolour does to us. So now I'm going to go back into my reds and oranges. And I'm going to think about just a few little areas of kind of detail. Not really sort of, you know, I was going to say biographical detail, but I don't think fish really have biographies. I mean sort of like, you know, nature study kind of detail, not like that. But I'm just going to take some red some stronger red kind of coming around. And I'm going to just give it a little, kind of like a gill sort of up there and then bring, and obviously you're using two colors. So this is whatever colors you're using. You might be using yellow and green. You might be using um, pink and, uh, and purple or something, you know, different to what I'm doing, obviously, but you just kind of have to think about how you're going to do that. And somewhere around here is going to be an eye. So uh, I'm going to just sort of put that in, in red at the moment. I might go back and add some blue onto that. And then where I've got this body up here, where there's sort of going to be fin coming up there, I want to um, use some red just to start bringing some lines, but still really soft, because it's the pen work that's going to be doing most of those, just to sort of bring those up from the body sort of edge. So this is sort of the great big fin on the top where they're becoming really sort of fancy like that and again if it feels too stripy come in with some water and just get that to to move around and just soften so it's not too strong and then I've got this sort of darker area coming through here so I'm going to start doing my more sort of bluey red, more purpley red, kind of coming down behind that one. And just by kind of seeing it in these sort of big areas, we're still sort of thinking fish, and we're just seeing these, sort of, we, can, we can come in and put more detail in later. So around the eye, I'm going to come in and give it a little bit of a, a blue tone. Oops, just try not to touch that wet paint there. And just a little ring of blue which I will go into later and make that look more like a sort of eye. And they always have that sort of slightly sad looking face, but don't they fish? It's that old joke about, you know, all fish are called Bob because there's always one behind the other one going, Bob, 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 trying to get his attention. It's a terrible joke, sorry. And then I can just pull some little flicks of paint through that wet, watercolour there just at the very edge of the brush and it starts to have that feel of of fins or something and I'm going to do a little bit because that worked quite well that I'm going to do a little bit more of that where I've got that red so you're using your contrasting the darker of the two colours kind of coming up into there just to give that a bit sort of um, 
with more definition. And then looking at that, there's not a huge amount more that I want to do with that. I'm going to add, I want to get a bit more red, I think, into some of the sort of fins of the bottle, a really kind of bright, cheery red, because I want there to be quite a nice contrast between the two. So I'm going to take my line in between those flicks and then just bring it down into red. So going quite carefully just between each blue one, but if it's still nice and wet and it still does something spready and if it dribbles, and none of that matters because it's going to be this sort of very free-flowing kind of abstract fishy shape. And it's all just about, you know, however strange it looked at this point in time, um, we can sort it out and it all become part of this incredible tropical fish that we're doing, that we're creating. And nature has done far more crazy kind of fish antics on these guys than we can even dream of. So, so I'm just bringing some stripes of long brush strokes, I suppose, flicks of long paint kind of come down under there just because I want to add a bit more red and on the body area I want to get a bit more color in there so I think I'm going to go I've got I'm sort of doing red and blue but I'm going to do sort of again my strong orange and I'm just going to give myself um something to build into sort of like fin shape uh, not fin scales and I'm just going to push my brush sort of into the surface and get some blobs going. I think those are a bit hard so I'm going to water that down a bit. Yeah that's better. I just want um, to put some paint blobs on the surface. It's the, the back of the fish is quite faint at the moment because it's really faded down as it's dried so I've just got to be wary of where that is but just with plenty of water, not too strong a pigment but just um pressing the end of the round brush onto the surface so I'm kind of building it across um, the fish surface and you can see how this, these can then become the centre of scales and sort of a pattern across the fish when we come to sort of doodle on top of it and at the moment that looks a bit like a hedgehog but you know we're going to work on it later and then just round the face maybe just the end of the brush just to put some dots on and we will go back in and and if that looks too dotty, I don't know, does that look too dotty? If you think it, the oil is a bit dotty, then what again, wash the brush, get some, I was about to say some wet water onto it, as opposed to the dry water, but some wet water and just soften, you know, dab around in between them, blend them a bit and let the water kind of trickle down on the surface just to sort of soften all that through. And there's not a lot more painting that I think we really need to do on that because that's kind of the basis that we need. Uh, my only concern is it might be a tiny bit on the wet side. So um, I might just very quickly um, go and grab the hairdryer, which I know is lurking around here somewhere, um, and give it a quick blast. We can also get a bit of tissue and just lift a little bit of that water off the surface. If you don't have a hair hairdryer handy, um, tissue might be the better sort of option just to kind of um, get a little bit of that moisture off. It is drying quite quickly, but I am just going to run and get the hair dryer, which is on the other side of the room, and uh, give it a quick blast. So if you want to go, if you, if you know where your hair dryer is, if you've got one, this is when they can be very useful. You might want to run and grab it too. So I'm going to go and do that now. Where's the hair dryer? Hair dryer. Right, I now have the hairdryer. Um, I'm going to mute myself while I use it because you don't need to have my hairdryer in your ear and it will literally take about 30 seconds just to take some of the dampness out of that paper. Okay.
Okay, so as you can see, we've got some fantastic runs happening here where the, the really hot, powerful air kind of hit the, the paper. But this is now really kind of dry. And this is a great way of just slightly speeding up the process if you're, because um, we only have so many hours in the day and so many moments we get to do drawing. Um, although I'm working on that, I'm going to find another day that only ex that exists between two days that nobody else has. That's my aim in life. So somewhere between Wednesday and Thursday that just for me, <laughs> then I'll get everything done. Right. So now I've got my um, fish all sort of dry, I can start thinking about the lining that I want to do on it and the patterning. So I'm going to use um, some blue pens and some red pens. This will work just as well if you've got black pens. It will just have a sort of stronger feel to it. Obviously, you want to try and I think use colours that relate to the paints that you've been using. So if you've been using, if you found a couple of green felt tips or purple felt tips, and those are the kind of colours you want to use, you can also completely use a third colour or fourth colour into your fish. It'll just give a different effect and all of it will work really nicely. I'm going to use the blue as, as I would kind of a black pen because it's going to be, because it's slightly darker than the the red or it's a strong slightly bolder color not bolder I suppose cooler color it's going to give me a more kind of fine line kind of effect so these gel pens by the way I got these in a big pack um, from Amazon and they were I think about I think they were 10 pounds for about a pack of 30 40 even I think and they're all sort of there's some slightly crazy neon ones in there which I have used in a couple of things and they are really bright so you have to use them very sort of sparingly but sometimes they can work quite well um, but most packs of gel pens are are really useful for this kind of thing because they, they are fairly nuts, um, fine ends so they're about 0.4 um, in comparison. If you want to use more of a sort of um, professional kind of drawing pen uh, the best coloured ones that I've found are these ones which are uh, micron pigma microns and they do like it's quite a basic range of colours but they do do sort of the primary colours and this green sort of one and they come as low as 0.05 and that's the finest nib that I found in a sort of coloured drawing pen because they don't tend to have the range that um, the black pens do. Um, I've also, um, there's one more brand that I'll show you that I, th I think are quite good. These ones um, are the Arteza Fine Liner. They are 0.4. Again, this Arteza is the Amazon owned brand art materials. So it's like they're, they're them trying to take on Windsor and Newton. And honestly, a lot of their stuff is fantastic. And I'm really quite, you know, I'm all in favour of um, uh, not having to spend a fortune. Um, these ones, you can get quite a big tin of these of about sort of 40 or 50 of these. And it's, they're, they're one of those sort of things that they're always on sale. So hopefully you can get them around about the £20 mark. And um, they're nice. And what's particularly good about these ones, although our teaser probably wouldn't like me saying this, is that they're actually not very water, they're actually slightly water soluble. I don't think they're meant to be, but they are. But why that's lovely is that you can do some really fine detailed work with them. And then you can actually go in with a fine brush and some water water and um, slightly make them run and it's sort of like a little bit like a watercolour pencil but in pen form so I've got some really nice sort of effects and techniques with that and also they're quite nice because they're triangular in cross section and that's nice because when you put them on the table they don't roll away they stay put so those are ones that I particularly use and I sort of like right okay so I obviously want to get quite a long um, some nice long trail lines kind of coming through here so I want to think about there being veins on the kind of fish and those sort of, um, uh, yeah, it's veins really, isn't it? And kind of sort of struts that are coming through. So I'm drawing them, but I'm also always trying to follow an edge of a brush mark. So I'm not just going in and imposing a line where there is none. I'm trying to always pick out um, where the edge of a brush mark or um, a line of, um, pigment is coming so that I've got a reason where I'm doing my brush mark, we're doing my pen mark and hopefully I've got like a slight wiggle in the or ripple I suppose in those sort of brush lines and I can follow those and that gives me a little bit more um, just a little bit of uh, form into it. I'm going to come a little bit closer so you can again see um, where I'm sort of coming through and then I'm just going to start by using these sort of lines in here. I'm going to come back and add some pattern to the fish so it's not going to just be a plain, a plain 
Siamese fighting fish. Gosh, as if this could ever be considered to be plain. But I'm going to add some more detail into that. But I'm just seeing, see here is really nice where I've got this little sort of like oh, a sort of half moon of um, or U shape of paint at the top here, pale paper. I can sort of outline that and then um, I can take the line up alongside that blue. And I'm kind of trying to start off in the blue and then bring it down through the colours. So whatever your contrast colour is, or even if you're working with black, I'm sort of starting off in the blue and then bringing that down all the way down through the red. And it just sort of starts to give some really nice definition to these fins and um, really brings that sort of fancy edge through. And I've got a nice little white space there, so I want to make sure I'm working around that. And I'm trying to hopefully get, um, hopefully the brush mark has given me a kind of rhythm that I'm picking up on, that I'm just um, going to add in or sort of to work with to kind of bring that sort of colour in. That I'm just but just keep letting the brush mark determine what you're doing. So you're not worrying about where you're going. What you're looking for is where is my paint taking me? Uh, where is my paint? Where is that line of paint going? Can I follow any little bumps and kind of ripples in it? Just kind of bring that down all the way down through it. And I've sort of started kind of, haven't quite gone all the way up to this end here. So I'm going to come back and just come into that sort of area and pull some lines coming down and it's the old thing again that I sort of say it always sounds like I'm being really daft when I say it but if I want to get some darkness in I bring the lines closer together so that they where we've got more of that blue line that means we get more of the darker color and whether you're using black or whatever your darkest tone is that becomes your shadow so here at the top of the, where it's joining up the fish's body, I start with them quite close together, then maybe let them spread out a bit. If I can find a paint trail that will support, will help me sort of along with that. So I just kind of bring those sort of through. And then I'm going to come back up and I'm now going to, there's a nice blue line there for me to follow. Just sort of taking that down, but just letting the paint, the, the paint guide my line and it starts to really give this the feel of the struts or the, the veins, I suppose, or the structure of the fish's fins. And let's bring this one. And as I come to this sort of area here, I'm thinking, well, um, I'm going to just follow the blue lines down because they're a bit further apart. So that's what this one has given me. You might have yours closer together. And that's fine too. And then just follow this one down through that kind of red into the end there. So that's just starting to give me um, a bit more direction and a bit more movement in the the sort of fish area, the, in, in the fish's body and trying to bring that on. There's a blue, I've got a blue stripe through here, so I'm going to um, follow that down with my blue pen to give that sort of definition. And then um, with this one up here, because this fin is sort of higher up, and so if I imagine it would be kind of like um, catching a bit more light, I'm going to do some blue lines on here, but I'm not going to do as many or as long because I want this area down here to be slightly darker in kind of feel. So although we are doing sort of patterns and following what's here, we can still think about things like bringing tone and bringing light and shadow. So this blue line is not going to go as far, it's, it's going to stop before it goes, it's not going to go all the way to the end of this um, fin up here. So it's going to start down here and it's going to follow that shape of the brush and then when the brush peters out it's going to disappear off too. So we're not going to carry that all the way through. What I will eventually do is get a, a red pen and continue it to the end so it's brighter and redder looking. But I, I want to get a little bit of shading in here or sort of structure but not as much as underneath so I'm just and I always just really enjoy the way we've got that very soft painted line just then sort of underlining it with that pen I just really like the way you get that feeling of the paint then sort of spreading up from it so let's just take this one um, 
just again just let that disappear off so it's not going all the way to the end it's going to just sort of follow that paint mark and just a little bit more before it disappears off again it looks quite dark up here I think it's to do with the lighting um, but it is still the same blue pen um, if you've got the black only and I would probably go for like the, the, the thinner pen so up here you'd be doing a very the smallest pen you've got whether that's a 0.1 or even one of the 0.5 micron pens and as you come down here then you might do some lighter kind of black line so I don't want to put too much more blue up there at this point because I really like that that's given a bit of structure but it's not making it too heavy um, and I don't want to leave this lovely sort of watercolour edge that we've got down here I definitely don't want to I don't think I want to um, uh, oh no actually now thinking about it, see, I always change my mind I actually think I do want to just follow this edge now because this edge is in blue here I'm going to follow this bit in blue what I don't want to touch is this sort of nice soft bit up here right now and definitely leave that but I'm going to sort of tighten up that edge with the blue pen and, 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 and the bits that are red I'm going to go with a red pen I mean I say I've seen some really amazing artwork done with um, just ordinary Bic Biros in red and blue and because they, they have a range of colors and you can use them and they're very they're actually pretty durable inks and they go really well over lots of surfaces so um, if you've only got if you know because you can't get out of the shops you've only got biro do go and get one and have a go with it it's surprising actually how good it is at drawing and I love the fact that it was invented by a man called Ladislaw Biro I, you never think about that but that actually was his name and that's why it was called Biro a biro pen um, and a very very clever invention uh, yeah so that's just that's uh, I can't like that that's quite tasty when that's just sort of made that darker because it sort of really adds a nice contrast to that area of watercolor so I'm going to do that again along just along the sort of bluer edge of this fin here so I'm going to take that down and again I'm not having to think about what I'm doing because I'm just following the paint that is there that the brush has given me so whatever shape you've got here is absolutely fine because that's going to work for your drawing because it's your paint mark and just going to bring that and I'm, that lovely traily drip that I've got I'm going to go down that as well well slightly missed it there but I'll just fill that in a bit there you go magic gone so that's just going to come down there so my fish has got a traily bit going down there um, which makes it sort of individual Right, so I'm going to then think about, I'm going to do his eye in the quite in blue so that, because that sort of really helps to kind of bring it alive, I think, to get that in. So I'm going to draw around the shape. If you haven't got a perfectly round shape, you can get away with slightly tidying it up and making it a bit more round. Um, it's fine just to sort of get that in. But I'm just going to go around that so it's just like drawing it round. And... That little, I managed to get a lovely little white or pale bit in the middle, so I'm going to kind of go around that just to give that a bit more life. So that starts to bring him to life and give him sort of a bit of personality. If you haven't got a very clear eye to work on, then you might be able to just draw it in with pen uh, where you want it to be. And they've always got this quite big sort of gill behind the eye kind of area. So I think as long as you've got sort of a shape you can kind of follow to be a gill sort of line like that just to sort of bring it out a bit we're going to do a lot more detailing on, in sort of red and colors around there so it won't look quite as stark as it does now um, then along this bottom edge here where I've got this darker tone being blue so if you've been following me or got something similar so you've got this darker area here I want to start getting some texture and some sort of fin shapes while I've got my blue pen I'm going to get some in there so I've got some of these nice sort of areas look where I've got some red moving into the blue so if you've got an area like that you can sort of define it and draw around it a bit because the scales don't have to be perfect and even at the moment but I'm just going to um, just drawing and defining where those areas are with my blue pen um, because these are kind of like his belly scales and often you do see that fish will have darker colouring on the bottom because they're trying to you have to remember that um, they're trying to make the best of their light and they're often they're trying to disguise their shape and their form so they will 
um, have darker scales at the bottom to make them look sort of more bigger and more solid. And there we go. So I like that that sort of feel of that sort of dark blue line around the dark blue shape. Well, there's just a nice one up here that I can see. So I can do that. So I want you to be looking at your fish really and thinking about um, can I break the bottom edge up there into kind of random scale shapes? They don't have to be precise and perfect, but that sort of has that really nice kind of feel. There's something very pleasant about working on the same colour paint with the same similar related colour pen. Right, so now I'm going to find myself um, a red or an orange pen. I mean, luckily I've got a nice, easily identifiable set of colours here. I've just got to make sure that there is a very, very neon orange, and I'm just I'm not sure about whether I'm going to use that because it is a bit, a bit sort of eye achy to look at. Um, it's quite handy to have this sort of area here where you've got the masking tape because I can come in and just scribble on the masking tape and see how that pen's going to look before I get into my picture. So I can scribble on my masking tape bit, and then yes, that's a, that's a nice red. It's not too. It's more of a metallic red rather than a day glow kind of neony red. Right, so let's see how this one works out. So what I want to do up here is to extend some line work through this sort of fin, a bit like I've done down here, but now I'm using a red pen, so I'm going to follow on the red paint mark, the brush mark, um, with the same sort of colour red. So again, looking, always looking to find my line and are trying to follow and it really doesn't matter if you don't follow it 100% exactly but that's what I'm looking for is the line through of the paint mark just sort of coming through that and I like to take it all the way from the fish's body along that line and then just sort of up to the end and Just looking to see, and if I can't see a very clear, you know, runs out a bit, just kind of decide where you want it to go at that point. But you know, if your if your brush mark peters out a little bit, um, we can then take over into the driving seat a bit more and decide where you want to end it. But I can just take that sort of line through that sort of paint mark right out to the trail of my fantastic fish and then I'm going to move just along just following that through there and coming along along the line you've got and of course you're looking to see what your lines are so your lines are never going to be the same as mine or anyone else's so it's just picking out and seeing where those lines want to go and just sort of following through the edge and you can take them out a bit longer but it's really kind of abstract sort of shapes but because they're moving in the same direction the brush marks what they're doing is giving that kind of feel of movement as if the fish is swimming sort of suspended through the water and then I'm going to take my red line onto the tail here I've got a slightly darker um, purpley red so I'm going to bring that down and because it's again it's a darker area I can get my red lines a little bit closer together to add um, some um, tone sort of feeling of tone as well and just going to bring them all into that sort of pinky zone section through there and um, come down through into that and then this last sort of area in here again this has always been a bit brighter and I want to keep that so I'm, that's why I'm using red line and picking out the shapes that I've got in there and following that through at the moment I'm not going to put any red line into this sort of lower section where I've got this darker line you know my mind might change but what I am going to do is like I did this blue edge here with the blue pen I'm going to take just this little section here where it's red and I'm going to follow my edge and work around that just picking up the shape really following if I can, as close as you can the shape 
in the paint just to give that uh, a finished sort of edge and the same with I've got a very sort of soft bank of um, pink here which is the very pale kind of washed out red paint and I'm just going to so this is going to almost look like I'm drawing it straight onto white paper but I am actually following um, a little area which you can just see of kind of pinkness kind of coming round and just to sort of bring that in there because the edge of their fins is very sort of um, raggedy and, and light, doesn't have a very thick, strong edge. So with this one here, I've got these quite long trails kind of coming off his fin. So I'm going to kind of almost leave, um, I'm going to leave them sort of like spines. I'm not going to leave them, but I'm going to join them all up now. I'm going to go around the edge, but I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come along this edge because this is where the red comes, this sort of red fin, and um, bring this along to the edge and then um, just follow again following the sort of paint that I've got here just to bring that shape and then um, as I get to that sort of spur come up to meet it I can come around the end a bit more come back down so I'm just following and if, I, if I've got a very long bit that's coming out into space I just bring my line up to meet it so I get a very um, thin like edge point. I can just move the camera a little bit that way because it slightly tends to, when it gets close, it tends to unfocus a little bit. So I can bring that round and down and then up again, just so I'm getting a really sort of fancy kind of raggedy edge and down and up and down into space here and just round that into the area and that gives me a really lovely um, overall effect of this very sort of fancy fish fin at the top. Right, I'm just going to mute for long enough to have a slurp of tea. What are they doing? Right, so um, there we go. That's my tea slurped, and my my two cats are in the sitting room squaring up for a fight. So if you hear any, if World War Cat, Cat World War Three breaks out in the background, we'll just carry on because they'll have to sort themselves out for once. Right, I'm not going to play ref. Okay. Now I want to get some pattern into his sort of scales into the into the the body area. Um, so I'm just going to put a little bit more light on it. So. I can start to see what's happening here. So I've got like the other side of this brush mark here. So I'm going to bring my red pen in around that and some of these little sort of red shapes like this sort of in there. Now I'd quite like to leave some room in some of these scale shapes to do some pattern work. So it's not just going to be a completely sort of realistic fish. So I'm going to do some relatively big um, shapes. So again, it's going to be looking to see where my paint line is coming. But I don't want to just do, I said, don't do absolutely tiny scales because then you're going to have to do absolutely tiny patterns in them. I mean, it's up to you if you want to get your magnifying glass out and do really microfine work. Um, please do. Um, but I'm just going to do some relatively big shapes. Um, I can always you can always make them a bit smaller later by sort of dividing them up, but just to sort of find, see a shape in that um, um, painted surface and bring, decide where your line's going to go to kind of make it uh, into a scale shape. And, you know, if you can't find an exact pattern, then you just sort of like start with the bits that you can see and then will work around them. Well, the cat seem to have decided that discretion is the better part of valour and backed away, so that's good. Right, so I'm just going to get all these areas and if I find some interesting shapes I'm going to include those. So it's it's very much sort of patchwork fish. It's not, um, I mean there are of course ironically loads of patterns that are based on fish scales that are very even and very sort of those very even half moon kind of shapes very popular in the 1920s with sort of patterns and fabric patterns and that sort of like and they're all sort of based on fish scale patterns 
And you can totally do that if you want to. And I'm being slightly more um, organic with the kind of shape of the fish scales um, because I want to do, I want to take each sort of one and put a little tiny little pattern inside it. Um, so I want to give myself some room to actually work in. So if we were doing a kind of actual representational drawing of our fish, you'd be a lot. The scales would be a lot smaller. But by the time we've got the pattern worked into them, then they're going to look um, smaller because they're going to have a lot more detail on them. So, and I'm just going to take a couple of these ones in this area here where I've not got too many veins. If you've got somewhere similar, I'm just going to put a couple going down into there, not too far, but that just helps to show kind of where he's going off into his tail. And then um, again, coming up along this route up the top of the mountain, as it were, and along the backbone, um, just to sort of find. And again, if you've got um, gold and silver and those sort of like colours or white pens, and on that note, I would like everyone to have white, a white pen for next week, but I will explain more about what sort of pen at, at the end. But everyone needs to try and get themselves a white pen. They are luckily very easily available because we're going to do some white line work. And the last week, going to do it on black paper without any watercolour, but just like the fun of doing white on black because it's really absorbing. But again, I will go into that um, uh, at the end of the session. So I'm just getting the last of those sort of scale shapes in. So even with just those sort of quite random scales, and he really does start to look very sort of fish-like. Fish um, on his face area, I'm just going to do that sort of big gill shape and here I am going to go a bit smaller and go in um, it's very difficult as about so I'm going to adjust the scale and of course that sounds like I'm altering his scales but I mean the physical scale I mean I'm going to make the scales smaller so we're going to have smaller scale scales towards the face here I was doing a, a nature illustration paint course um, today and we were looking at a hair and the number of times I'm trying to talk about doing the hair on the hair and having to sort of like come up with different words for hair because the sentences were getting very confusing. So I'm just doing some smaller scale shapes. And again, they can just be quite random, just sort of like that little circular pattern that we use quite a lot, just to sort of go around the areas of paint on his face and um, draw those in sort of round that area. So that's just, I've masked that with my hand, haven't I? Sorry about that. But that's just smaller scales kind of coming in onto here. Right, so I'm going to move my camera in a bit closer now because we can get some real close-up detailing. What I want to do is do a little kind of pattern inside each scale so that to begin with, um, from a distance, they just look like they've been coloured in a bit. But as we get closer, we're going to see some differentiation going on and some little details because I'd like it to be so that as more, the closer we look the more we kind of see something going on but what I want to think about is the way my pattern is sort of weighted so I'm going to try and always have the center of my pattern on on the sort of left hand side of each scale and it's going to stretch across to the right hand side so let me do one and that will probably make more sense if I actually do sort of a one so I'm talking about doing like a little so on this one, I'm going to do a half moon kind of into this corner and then bring some sprays out into that shape, sort of in red. So that's giving it that sort of darker edge like that. And then I'm going to do some petal bumps and I'm going to leave a bit more space in them. So the pattern there is a bit brighter and a bit wider. So it looks like a sort of quarter of a daisy kind of shape so what I'm whether a pattern I'm going to try and do I'm going to keep the darker end of it always on the, the this left hand side of the scale and then the lighter end of it on the right hand side of the scale you can totally not do that if you can't be bothered or you don't want to or you're getting confused you can do it the other way around it's just that I think we're going to if I give it a direction that as, even if the patterns are then different on each one it kind of helps to bring the whole sort of pattern fish together so I'm going to do some spirals, some curly cues in this one, but I'm going to draw them out from the corner and then let them go big up against that side. And then again, start in the same direction and bring them up round like that. So because, again, when they're coming from the same point, that means that the pen is closer together in that corner 
and then when you do the curly cue pattern it's more space so it just needs a little bit more light. So they're just very very simple little patterns. I just want to have a little bit more darkness into the left hand side of each one of them. So on this one I'm just going to do a bump there like a teardrop bump and just colour that in like a little dot like that and then just very simple some lines coming out of it like that. And if you want to you can get your other colour, so your darker colour um, and then go in and just put a little hint of that maybe into the bottom corner of those pattern scales and that just helps to again add a little bit of darkness and I'm just going to flick that into some lines just sort of up but that just hopefully so when you come back from that there's a rhythm to those patterns it's not just completely random patterns so let's carry on let's do I think it tends to naturally give you this sort of half moon shape at the bottom kind of to fill in and then we can make that color that in um, so that becomes heavier and then on this one I'm going to give my lines coming out a kind of slight curve just sort of spiraling out along like a sort of little seashell like that sort of shape and then again I can go in with my darker pen and just add a little hint of the darker colour in the bottom like that um, and then this one this is my darker corner in here so some little stripy bits there and I'm going to do a kind of one row of bumps and then a bigger row of bumps just to sort of break that up and again a little darker one in there and you can totally use you can try if you want to use exactly the same pattern in each one that's quite effective too so that each one has this sort of same kind of daisy flower shape to it or something that fits into that um, I'm not going to do that because um, I want to show different sort of ideas but this one's just got some little curly sort of C shapes going back to back and then I can put some dots in it and like that and then again come in just into that little corner and just darken it up with a touch of blue um, and then here's again that corner in there so I can do some red first and uh, let's do some zigzags in that one there we go so that's a sort of sharper shape so each little scale presents you with a little tiny frame or little canvas to work on and uh, if you get an idea that works in one, you can totally repeat it in another one, sort of. Uh, and if you've sort of done like half a dozen and you think you're running out of ideas, go back to the one at the start and see if you can do that one again. So let's do some um, curved lines on that. And just see if you can give it another little twist. And we're going to work across the fish kind of doing each scale. So the idea is, as I said, that when you see it from a distance, it just looks like divided up scales. And then as you come a bit closer, you realize there's more to it and there's more work gone into it. So let's do a little daisy flower bump on that one and then just some lines coming up to the end like that. Oops, sorry, bang the camera. It's just really fun to have these little tiny spaces to fill out because again, you can only do as much as you can do in each one. So um, and you can see how you're getting a rhythm happening so you know you've got to do your little half moon section in and then just see what else you can do and really just like you know a spray of little lines works quite effectively now I've got some blue scales kind of down here as well so I'm going to do the same thing in those I think but again just have in the blue pen just having a dark edge and then very simple just some lines going through that I think that looks quite nice just sort of to bring that sort of pattern idea into oh, that's the wrong end use the pointy end that really helps I find with drawing um, and then I'm going to fill in again that little half moon in there and some big loopy daisy petals and I suppose if you were really smart and could work out such things and I've just this has just occurred to me so I probably should have thought of it earlier but it'd be quite cool to do things like tiny seashells in each of the scales wouldn't it so it was really had a sort of underwater kind of feel 
um, if you've got your really tiny micro pens and um, a magnifying glass, you could maybe even get into all sorts of detail, like you know, little um, underwater things like I don't know treasure chests or mermaids. But I don't know how much of mermaids you could fit in. But you've got a good magnifying glass and a steady hand. It's surprising how much detail you can get into a small space. There we are. So it's just that they're not complicated shapes, but somehow all over the effect of them is really quite satisfying and quite um, striking. And the more you do, the more it builds up, the more um, you start to get the feel of um, how it's going to look overall. And just that little bit of extra sort of colouring in or shading on the surface and that corner and using that as a kind of plan for all of them really helps to give it a bit of definition. It gives the scales a little bit of shading as well. Now, of course, as you're going along and you're doing these sort of petal shapes or these sort of curly shapes in between, what's happening is you're also leaving yourself paler areas of paint, of watercolour. And if you've got um, a white pen or a gold pen or a lighter colour pen to the one you're working with, you can always go in and add a tiny dot of highlight into some of these patterns. So let me just show you quickly what that looks like. Um, so I've got a white pen here and I can just go in and put a little extra light into the patterns that I've already got in here. So again, I'm just sort of now colouring in just with a little white line um, onto here. Now you will find with white pens is that they are quite, can be quite temperamental and I find that different um, brands will work better on different surfaces than others. Um, it is a little bit hit and miss. Um, as to how they come out, but I will give you my recommendations for the ones that I've found sort of um, as I've been going through. But I don't have to do that in white. I could be using, if I look in my gel pen pack, I've got some yellows and a sort of paler orangey colours. So I could also do it with um, some orange and yellow kind of extra colours and dots in it, I could use some gold, you know, to add some real kind of, because fish do have these wonderful silvery kind of surfaces to them. But um, for now, we're just going to carry on. I hope you can see that sort of, that, just that little extra bit of white in those ones. And now I'm going to carry on with my um, scaling across the surface. And again, if you're sort of the sort of person that likes a kind of, um, not production line, but I suppose like likes to plan it. Once you've got the idea, you can go across like this and put in all the kind of half moon shapes first. And that helps give you a kind of feel of where all these shapes are going. And then you can go back and do the extra bits, uh, the patterny bits on top of that. But just sort of to bring that through And um, that starts to give you a kind of feel of where that whole thing is going. I'm just slightly adjusting the camera because when it's close like this, it does tend to, if it's at an angle, it slightly goes unfocused, which can be a bit off-putting. So I'm um, just going to bring all these sort of areas in first. And this is the sort of technique you can use for if you want to do doodles based on things like pineapples or pine cones. Um, snakes, of course, if you want to go really over town and do a great long pattern snake, that's quite a piece of work. Um, in uh, Things like um, dragons and lizards and all those lovely reptiles, they all give you these beautiful surfaces like this and um, it gives you so much scope for doing all these fantastic sort of pattern works like this across them. And... Uh, my favourite animal of all, which I've drawn quite a few times in the past, being a pangolin, which is one of the few scaly mammals in the world. And if you don't know what they are, they're absolutely delightful. They look like stretched, look like a cross between an armadillo and an anteater, but they're covered in scales and they run on their hind legs, which is adorable. And the poor things are very endangered, I'm afraid, because their scales are pure keratin and they get um, illegally killed for the hair product trade. So just be careful when you buy hair products that the keratin is properly sourced because it could be minced up pangolins, which is a terrible thought. 
Right, so once I've got those sort of areas in like that, that sort of gives me the kind of the feel of the way the fish is going and then I can come back in and I can put some patterns. And if you've got another thing you can do is when you've done like this, you can think, right, that's my little daisy bump there. So I'm going to do that in a couple of them and spread them around. Again, it's sort of working in a slightly sort of mass production way. And then once I've done those in a few places, then I think, right, I want to do a different one. So in some of them, I'm just going to do like a, a, an outline, an echo line around that half moon bump like that coming round. I can do that in a few more places and up round there and then on oh, this one here it needs it, its darker centre. That's it sort of round in here and then um, I'm going to do a zigzag, more zigzag shape and then I can make sure then that I don't get two of the same sitting next to each other because I can sort of go round and work them in so they look a bit different on each one. Oh, that one needs um, its dark centre in. There we go. And then I'm just going to do some with just some long like trails coming out like petal lines. So let's get that one. I realised fantastically this red pen is actually a glitter gel pen, so it's got a very slightly shiny surface to it, which is really good fun. And you know, this is such a good way of giving yourself an excuse to buy all those really cool pens that you know kids get and we don't get to play with. And I think, no, reclaim the glitter pens, reclaim the metallic ink pens, let's have loads of fun with a bit of bling. And here around the face, I can just do some little secondary kind of circles inside the circles and on this one here I'm going to do on his gill I'm going to do a half moon sort of rainbow and then quite a nice big flowery shape just to sort of bring that in through there and some little bumps maybe on some of these and um, or I can do some I've got some, I've got a liney one there, oh, I've got a liney one here, so I'm going to just bring some lines through. And, oh, this one can have a daisy flower bump. And so we're starting to get a really nice feel. And of course, if you do this on a much bigger scale, you can really give yourself quite large scale areas to fill in. So when I say bigger skin, I mean like a bigger size. And then you can get um, a nice kind of effect is to imagine that all these scales are a bit like sort of patchwork and do almost like um, rose patterns and sort of dots and stripes that look like at the end of the day you've got a fish that's then made of um, um, textiles like you know old like an old patchwork sort of thing and that looks really fun and you can use quite different colours and inside each of the scales to get that sort of difference to work across it um, which does look really nice sort of bring that round and then um, oh, I can do a zigzag into that bit I think there and some lines coming round into those shapes and I mustn't forget the um, the blue fins underneath so I'm going to add some dark edges and then some patterns into those as well And you can, I mean, the blue was going to look really nice if we add some, a few white lines into it because that starts to, because it's darker, it really looks like a highlight. So it adds a very silvery kind of quality to the overall effect of the fish. Put some nice big sort of um, blue patterns in there. I do like blue on blue. I think it's because it makes me think of sort of vintage china, that kind of look. So let's put um, another dark bit in there and then some lines coming through. And that's it. And then I'm going to need to put um, the sort of little blue dots that I started doing into 
the tail. I want to just add a little bit of those now into all of those red dots that I've drawn patterns. And obviously you're going to be using the two colours that you've picked out for your fish. So it might be green on yellow or it might be um, red and purple. Or it might be, you might have gone for all the kind of cool blues and greens. But whichever the darker colour is of your choice. I'm going to just, you're just going to go in and bring that through so all the scales have a bit more tone, a bit more shading on them. And just into that one there. And that starts to sort of give that a really kind of nice directional feel. Because the fish is moving um, from right to left. You know, it's facing, facing left, so that's why this darker end is sort of following um, so if you keep it facing the way the fish is going, then it helps to add to that feel of it moving. If you do it the other way, it's kind of like putting the brakes on him. It doesn't work so well. So always kind of go towards the head end. So it's slightly darker towards the head end with all of your patterns. If you feel like doing more fishes after the class. And then we're going to come... into those areas exist. If I come back from that now, you can see how that should hopefully, if you want to take a step back, you can see how that's um, giving that kind of overall kind of feel and movement without it being, so to, from, from a distance, it just looks like I've done some patterns on some sort of fish scale attempts. And then you realize as you get closer, that there's much more detail going on in that. And so it's worth having a second look. So I can just take a little bit of the dark blue into the back of every scale, the front of the scale actually, I should be, shouldn't I should say. And then as I come into the sort of face area again on some of these scales, just a little dark area um, of the blue. And oh, this one here, this needs its blue. Just kind of coming in around there. And just that area there, that can come a little bit darker. So we're just starting to get a nice sort of movement now through the fish. Kind of, and we've got all those little delicate patterns. There's a couple of empty scales up here, I've noticed. So let me get something just sort of... And again, if you can find shapes within those little tiny scales, the more you look at them, the more you can maybe see those. And that will give you um, something else to kind of draw on. And this, I've got an area here around his face, so I'm going to put some line work, just, just some very simple sort of stripes coming through. And that little gill there, that needs to have its slightly darker edge to it as well here. And then I'm going to, now that I've got that, oh, I think I want to make the eye a bit darker so, to give that contrast around the pale, because I've got those dark blue um, scale details. I need to make the eye stand out a bit more by just getting that a little bit darker and come round. And just by putting that blue line around the bottom of some of these shapes, it starts to give them a little bit of shadow. So underneath his chin there, I'm just starting to make some little pattern shapes, just, just little really simple sort of half moon so he's quite a floral fish really, but just to sort of add a little bit of shading into his face just under there. Right, so looking at these lovely fins, I think I can get a little bit more detail just into maybe some pattern to starting appear down here. So I think I can, I'm going to start by doing around that sort of blue area here, I'm going to start just to, I just feel I want to draw around those shapes again, because those shapes are there in the paint. So I'm just drawing around them just to add a bit more kind of depth and structure and sort of bring that round and just sort of following this, that sort of blue shape, I just feel I want to bring in. It kind of makes this area look sort of slightly transparent, which is really quite nice. So 
that um, just gets a little bit of difference through there and then they've got this nice area here of blue so all I've got two scales going down onto his tail which I haven't um, I haven't put a pattern on at all so let's let's do that let's put some pattern into that little bit there and take that down onto the tail that's better and I'm just going to put some smaller circles in I think just to sort of bring that down in and um, I've got this nice blue area here so let's draw around that too as I seem to be doing that I don't want to make it too heavy but just let that sort of come down into his body shape and I think I want to get a, just a bit more blue under the tail there just to sort of bring those last two blue scales in that's it okay right so I've done this little bit of extra lining here so I think I'm going to go where I've got this very dark edge here I can come and just flick and just follow that edge of blue shape again just sort of around there uh, follow him up into that area and um, bring some sort of and then I've got all this sort of nice pattern area here so I could if I wanted to if I wanted to get into that I can add to my kind of pattern floral fish kind of feel by bringing some patterns now into this kind of red area because I can fit some nice sort of spirals let me come in a bit closer again because I've given myself all this nice space to work in between these lines so I can bring um, I can follow this sort of pattern down and I can put a half moon bump in like that and then some petals and a spiral just to kind of see how that looks building down. Oh, I'm quite liking that. So it's given me a load more pattern to do now. And you see, we all thought, oh, we're going, oh, this is really quick, this one. It's nearly over, isn't it? No, no, there's more, always more pattern to squeeze into an image. And we can work our way down all these sort of in between some of these. And you might want to just keep it to the lower down one because, again, where we add more pen, it starts to look like shadow. But um, or you might want to do all of the fish if you want a project to keep you going. But I'm just using just really just spirals and some petal shapes. It's not a lot more complicated than that. It's just a spiral. And then I might put some petals kind of coming off it. A little bit like we did with the peacock. And I can do a circles with a circle inside and a circle inside and some lines coming through and then again I can come up into this one and it's just nice to fit them into that long thin space and sort of think of almost like these shapes like borders kind of running along and then you start sort of seeing it doesn't matter the pattern doesn't match up from side to side I think it looks better in fact if you don't try and draw it across you want to keep them in their sort of individual channels but then you get quite nice sort of patterns appearing in the sort of negative spaces between uh, in the margins where it's sort of meeting up so I'm just using teardrop shapes little spirals little snail shell spirals I can just put double circles in um, all those sort of again really simple just even some extra lines in between kind of half rainbows and half moons and that sort of thing just sort of working through there's a nice bigger area here so let me come this way so we can see sort of more of this pattern fish and again just some sort of flower shapes and a snail shell spiral and some circles coming down the circle in between and where it gets really small just little tiny s spirals and little squiggly lines and I've got quite a nice big space this is what I'm building up to so I can do some uh, two double barreled s spirals and then some 
uh, petal bumps coming through. And then let's have, I can do quite a nice big flower here. So I can do a half moon and sort of double it as a rainbow and then do some little bumps, just little stegosaurus bumps coming round and some spirally bits kind of just coming around there. So that's got me some room for some pattern work. And then I can just go into some teardrops coming off that sort of spiral. That's it, fabulous. And then again, a half moon, maybe a triple sort of line like that and a line through. And it's almost becoming a little bit like some of the feather patterns that we're using. I mean, I don't think there's any law that says we can't kind of mix them up a bit. And a pattern that works in one space because it's doodling, it's um, going to work in another. And then I can do a little half moon. I quite like offsetting them off each other so they're sort of deliberately not matching up. And then bring that round. And then um, if in doubt, always put a spiral in because that will always work. If in doubt, spiral it out. That's it, and then I can do, and little circles will always fill into a space like that. And my pattern fish is coming along, is looking really. If we didn't think we could get Siamese fighting fish any fancier than real life, I think we might have done it. So I really like this moment where we're getting up to this blue paint here with just these little red lines. And I think I'm going to leave the blue paint at the moment un. Patterned. I might come back to it later. I'm going to leave this very bottom bit here where we get this nice transition. I'm going to leave that without patterning. I'm just going to let it fade out before that point because um, I think it looks nice, really. That is my only intellectual reasoning behind that. I think I like it doing that. So that's what we're going to do. So I can just put a few more. Where you've got the really sort of thin, tiny pattern lines, it may just be all you're going to really fit in is some little tiny circles and maybe some sort of diagonals mixed together so I might do some diagonals, two little circles, three little circles and then the diagonals coming back the other way so they just sort of give a hint that there's pattern going on without being too um, definitive and I can just spiral some of those down and then again just in here maybe can just fit a tiny spiral but more like a little circle and just some little curved lines going one way, little curved lines going another circle, bracket, diagonal that way, diagonal that way, circle again, and just let them peter out towards the bottom. So it's just got a little hint, and they almost start to look like little rolls of fabric, kind of, you know, when you see them all in the shop and they're all lined up together when you're going in and buying fabrics that you know you probably shouldn't buy because you've got a stash of fabric at home, but you just really like this one, you don't want really to do with it, but you're going to buy it anyway, kind of shop. Um, yes, I'm not allowed in fabric shops anymore until I've made something with what I've got in the cupboard. So I've got a nice circle there and then some diagonal lines kind of coming through. And I can put a half moon there and just, you know, all sorts of pattern can just go tumbling down in a sort of almost like a curtain in the kind of fish, our pattern fish. And even just the really simple little diagonal lines and swirls is absolutely lovely. And it just, it's the having the mass of it all together just makes it look really um, detailed and kind of just gives it real surface and texture and just extra interest going on in the sort of fish. So it's no longer just trying to make it look like a fish, it's making it into a pattern doodle fish. So it's doing something very different than trying to be a drawing of a fish. Although you can see how you could just, you could get quite a naturalistic drawing at the end of this by using your pen lines to create scale patterns and um, the fin patterns. I think if you actually look back at the whole shape now, it definitely looks like a fish and it definitely looks like one of these sort of fighting fish from a very sort of loose explosive bit of watercolour at the beginning um, and it doesn't lose that delicacy of colour you still get the shades and the tones of the paint 
through the pen work. So I've just got time to do a few more of these little squirrels and then we'll come back together and see our aquarium of fishes. Just bring those last few down. And you can always fit tiny circles, you can always fit little tiny diagonal lines. They'll always work into a surface. And if you get really intricate, you could go back again with your um, paler colour pens and just do some little highlighting into in between um, some of the shapes that you've got in here. Just to add some little extra detail, because if you think you've got enough detail, why not put some more in? Because, you know, it's very much more is more, I think, when it comes to pattern. I'll just see if I can get some white to work into that blue scales. Yes, that looks quite good. If I can just get that to, this pen needs to, need to rub the pen a bit. But just seeing where I've got those blue lines and then putting a little flick of white into them really sort of gives them a, a highlight and just starts to bring them to life a bit more. Okay, so I'm probably going to stop there for now. I think I can probably do some more into this sort of area here. I think, you know, if I had some more time tonight, I would do some white work into this sort of, because it's at the top and it's lighter. I want sort of a paler colour to sort of lighten it up. But um, there we go. I will scan him and I will get him across to you this time, as opposed to forgetting scanning him and then forgetting to send it across to you, which rather defeats the object of the game. Um, let's come back together. Let me change my camera. And... FaceTime camera, there we go. Here I am, the end of the night. And uh, how are all the fishes? Would anyone like to uh, unmute and share their fish and say how they're doing? Do they like the fish? <laughs> it doesn't look like a hedgehog. Let's let me bring make it bigger for everyone. <laughs> there you go. That doesn't look like a hedgehog. That definitely looks like a flying fish. <laughs> no, that's lovely. Fantastic sort of orange. I love the purple with the red. It's beautiful. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Does anyone else like to share theirs? <laughs> 